So when talking about binge eating or compulsive eating, there's sort of two things that come to mind. Now, there's more to it, obviously, because it's a, a big and complex issue in the world. But these are the first two things that I personally would, would look into. And I think they're also kind of new perspectives, probably. So I'm not repeating things you've already heard numerous times before elsewhere. All right. So the first thing I want to mention and share is the so-called carrot and stick mentality that you probably have right now. And this happens when you are raised in a situation or environment where you are first punished for non-compliance and then you are rewarded for compliance. All right. And most people, including me, have had this experience growing up. Now, let me quickly explain what I what I mean. So in school, if you did something that goes that went against what the teacher says, then you are punished. And if you obey, you are so-called rewarded, right? If you obey and if you're so-called good, you get maybe you get an A or maybe you get like a golden star or whatever, right? And I remember if you didn't do something right, you were either sent out of class or you got detention or maybe you couldn't participate in something fun that happened later on in the day or in the week. Or I remember having to write down the same sentence for like 100 times. And if you object, they'll be like, all right, now it's, now it's double, right? And they basically threaten you with having to write down even more. So what this does is it creates a so-called carrot and stick mentality. Now, a carrot and stick mentality, when you deal with yourself, you will never grow up, all right? And hey, I'm working on this myself. I'm right here with you. I'm not yelling down at you from some, you know, um, ivory tower of perfect behavior. But if you don't try to get rid of this mentality, you will never grow up. All right. Because what you do is you say, oh, I had a tough day today. I'll just have a cupcake to reward myself. All right. So you're giving yourself a reward. Or maybe you'll say, oh, I didn't, I didn't work out today. I didn't do my cardio today, whatever. I cannot have dessert." Right, so you're punishing yourself by withdrawing something that you that you like. Now, the carrot and the stick, the punishment and the reward, it is how you train an animal. It is how you train a dog to like poop outside rather than inside, right? But using this approach, using the carrot and stick approach for yourself, it is very primitive, right? It is basically viewing yourself as a disobedient animal that cannot be reasoned with and therefore must be bribed and punished in order to achieve decent behavior. Now, if you're watching this, you're not an animal, right? And the only reason we train animals that way through, you know, reward and punishment is because they don't have the gifts that are unique to us as humans. They don't have the capacity for abstractions. You cannot reason with animals. You cannot negotiate with animals. And so the only way, obviously, to change that behavior is through reward and punishment. But you, my friend, you do have these gifts. So we don't need to use these primitive measures, right? I think, I think that makes sense. We don't have to reduce ourselves to mere animals that so-called need to be trained. And instead, we can use our unique human gifts to achieve our desired behavior. We can reason, we can negotiate, we can be curious with others, but also with ourselves. So yeah, really ask yourself with the eating, the eating that you're doing, the compulsive eating, the binge eating, are you punishing and rewarding yourself? Do you say, I deserve X because I've been good or I must punish myself with Y because I've been bad? Am I giving myself you know, rewards for doing the right thing and punishing myself for so-called doing the bad thing? Basically, am I, am I my own finger-wagging drill sergeant? Right? Because that means you never get to outgrow school, you never get to outgrow your teachers or parents who punished and rewarded you, or even the government and so on. So really, that would be my suggestion, right? where I would personally look into. And really try to liberate yourself from this idea that there's somebody watching you and, and giving you points for good and bad behavior because it's not the case. And as far as coaching goes, and from what I've observed over the last like decade, some will really grill you, the coaches that is, and think or say, oh, you didn't stick to the plan, you're weak, you're this and that, and name calling is basically a punishment. And what they're doing is they're revealing that they're still stuck in this primitive mentality, they haven't outgrown it, probably aren't even aware of it, and they also view you as an animal that needs to be, you know, bribed and punished. And personally, uh, I don't like this, all right? I'd rather view you as the, the human being that you are, capable of abstractions, capable of reasoning, negotiating with each other and yourself. And so I would, you know, come from a place of so-called curiosity, right? Like, tell me more. What happened when you overate? Let's, let's try to understand what is, what is going on really underneath. 
because I bet there's something we can we can learn together about that experience, right? Now, you are probably thinking, okay, well, if the reward and punishment is not the right approach, then what is the alternative, really? What is the healthy, mature, productive way to deal with it, to, to approach binge eating and, and, and um, compulsive eating? Which is a great question, right? And I'm going to show you exactly what, what to do in an upcoming more in-depth video on uh, the topic of discipline. Now, I'm not a fan of discipline at all, and this, what I just mentioned, the characteristic stuff, it will come up again in that in-depth uh, in video, all right? Now, the solution, the alternative, I kind of gave it away earlier already, but we want to use these gifts that are unique to us as humans. So we want to approach the issue through negotiating, reasoning, um, being sensitive, being um, uh, showing curiosity, but like I said, we will get into that more in an, another video. And I'll show you exactly how it works. Now, the second thing that I wanted to mention in this video on binge eating is not very actionable, but a good reminder, an insight to perhaps help you understand what really goes on underneath. Might resonate with some people, might not resonate with others at all. Which is about growing up in a chaotic environment. All right. So what seems to happen is you're going to have a tendency to overeat if you come from a system of chaos as a child for the simple reason that if you come from an environment of chaos or abuse or neglect or dysfunction then in a sense you cannot guarantee your next meal right as weird as it may sound um, so you gorge yourself what you do is you gorge yourself because it might be a long time until you eat again and that is basically what hunters did back in, back in the day or probably still do in a uncertain state of hunting Right? They get some, I don't know, deer or elk and they eat everything they can get their hands on because they wouldn't know when they would get to, uh, get their next animal. Right, So you're going to gorge yourself senseless if you are in a state of chaos. So one thing to recognize if you are growing up in a state of chaos and dysfunction and stress and stuff like this, it reminds you of the hunter-gatherer stuff right? Uh, throughout history. So you're going to have a tendency, you're going to have a tendency to overeat, which makes perfect sense if food supply is like random and scarce like hunting and out for example but if food is readily available like right now with a supermarket around the corner and a fridge in your home you're going to end up overeating now to make this a little bit more actionable we can try something different to hit it from a different angle all right this topic we can try to find patterns between when you overeat and the states of chaos in your life. So what I would do is look back through the tunnel of time and kind of think, is there a pattern that I can recognize? A pattern between when I tend to stress eat or overeat or whatever, compulsive eat, and stressful moments or events throughout my earlier life. All right, so first ask yourself, when do I always or regularly tend to overeat? And then the second question is, what in my earlier life happens around that time regularly so for example maybe right now you always overeat in the evening and then when you look back you think hey as a child growing up in the mornings they were pretty usually pretty quiet and stress-free but in the evening when a parent came home the environment became pretty chaotic or abusive or dysfunctional and it got me really stressed out and so now there's a possibility, uh, a possible pattern between the history and the present and the triggers that are, you know, included in that. Or instead of a time or a, or a moment, it can be a certain event or scenario that triggers this response within you. So maybe, for example, you binge eat right now after seeing a certain person. Then what you can do is ask yourself, does this person remind me of something or someone in my early life growing up? that sort of, you know, reactivates a trigger. Or to use an even simpler, uh, simpler example, maybe it's the same person. Let's say you have an abusive um, relative when you grew up and you still see that person to this day and you always tend to binge eat and overeat after seeing or even calling with that person. Now, in this case, that pattern would be pretty pretty obvious, right? As far as the, the trigger and the response goes. So yeah, look for patterns in your behavior and triggers from your earlier life. And that is sort of the other thing that I wanted to mention. Now, it might not sound very actionable or practical, but I really think it's important to be aware of these patterns, these potential patterns and insights, because uh, what it will do is they can help you understand what might contribute to, be, to your behavior um, unconsciously. Right. And well, speaking of this, you know, this topic, um, the chaotic environment, I'm thinking of one of my personal notes on impulsivity, right, that I once shared on my Instagram story a long time ago. I think it's relevant here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find it um, and I'm going to put it on the screen right here, right? And you can pause the video, you can read it. And I think it's pretty relevant to the topic at hand. 
Anyways, that's it. Keep an eye out for the more in-depth videos on Benjiri because there's much more to talk about. And also shoot me a message. Let me know if this is insightful or helpful. Um, I'm very curious what your, what your thoughts are. All right, and that being said, I will see you in the next video.